see a lot more people on social media talking about you know this and that about themselves and as a result of that you see uh, good and bad um, you know you see people be more accepting of others but you do see a dwindling of community and that got me thinking about the books that I do like to read in my free time and even some I've read in in class uh, Clockwork Orange is one of my favorites uh, No Country for Old Men I was also reading in class at the time and I thought about all the characters in it and these modern books from the 70s through today have these really nihilistic characters, these dark characters, and a lot of them have libertarian values. And I thought, you didn't see that back, you know, I took courses on 14th century lit. There certainly were no characters like that. You read Umberto Echo, and it's only the fool opens his mouth with laughter. Like, there's no community, you know, I mean, it's all community, it's no individualism. And then you even go to a book in the 50s, it's really not as much about that. Um, so I thought, you know, from the 70s on, it's been much more individual based, and a lot of these characters depicted as nihilists or nihilists, however you want to pronounce it. I'll get into that, but it's kind of funny the word nihilist or nihilist. The, the whole point of it is that nothing means anything, and then there's no actual consensus on how to pronounce the word. But just the fact that these books couldn't have existed now, or these movies couldn't have existed um, if it weren't for the move away from community and towards individualism, and then the fact that these characters are depicted as anarchists when they're nihilists and libertarians. But my last chapter I talk about, I see some new characters not just being uh, depicted as anarchists, but more positive nihilists. Your choices are excellent. They're hard, mm -hmm. but they're excellent, right? The theme of them all is they all end on really dark notes. They have these anarchistic, nihilistic characters and they all end really dark. Yeah. People who idolize these characters don't get the point. Right. Um, I didn't talk about this, but in Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killer, people who yes. idolize those killers don't understand the point that the over-violence, the ultra-violence, is meant to sicken you and make you realize, wow, this is really bad. We should not, you know. That's the thing. You want to leave, you want to leave the theater, you want to leave the novel not more violent. Right. But Sickened by the violence, the same way that Alex is in a clapper of orange. That's right. He cannot see a violent image without feeling physically sick. Right. That's yes. And you you explored that well. Yes. Yes. It's interesting that the in Barry's setting of the opera, when he made an operatic, uh, almost like Barry making an opera is almost like Kubrick making a film about a book. So, um, but he makes Iago even more just nihilist mm -hmm. and. Uh, the most famous aria in the whole opera is Iago saying he worships an evil god because we're nothing but dust. I mean, he doesn't say dust, he says we're dirt. And when it's all over, we, we just feed the worms. And after after death, what is there? Nothing. So, and I find it interesting that it's a chilling aria. Every baritone I've ever met in my life wants to sing Iago. So, uh, yeah. my guess would be they're not going to be influenced to be evil like that. Right. It's either genetic or it's your environment, yeah, like, yes. yeah. how you raise Nature, nurture. Yeah. Sure. So would these impact somebody? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe in the goodness, according to the goodness of people and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But I never thought about the nihilism in, in a lot of things. And uh, I, in many ways, you could say that the whole film noir genre of the 40s and 50s it's all nihilistic. Life, basically, life sucks. There's nothing else, so go for it. Um, so I guess the question that would arise for me then is, and there's no right answer to this. Nobody gets to a dissertation defense unless it's just a happy conversation among people thinking about ideas and books and films. Um, what was it like to be surrounded by this for a year? I always talk about how I believe everybody is inherently good, and I get funny looks a lot of the time. So this does go contrary to what I believe in a lot of ways. Although the libertarian aspect, where um, you know everybody should do what they want as long as you're not hurting anybody, that I can uh, understand. But I don't think that being around it for a whole year has made me any more negative. If anything, I've seen uh, just that the pop culture, the the conversation has gone a little bit. Uh, dark, but the whole point of it is to show the absurdity of this violence. Yeah, and you have, I think you have to, one has to have a certain quality of imagination yeah. to get that, right. to go beyond the literal. Right. You know, to, um, I mean, you're really, you're really talking about, as you, know, you said earlier, but attempting to form community. 
and you know, how do people find community of like-minded? Are there any uh, literature or, or films in which it is a female? That's, yeah, I, when you said that, I thought of that too. And I didn't even intend to pick all male protagonists. Yeah. It just happened because, even think of Joker. I can't think of a female uh, anarchist, nihilistic character. Um, what do you think your greatest contribution is? I think, well, at this point, because it is a topical subject, I, I think that there has not been very much research on, on this topic at all. And um, really, when you look up nihilistic libertarianism, you don't find very much. So I think that actually defining it and saying what we're seeing in popular culture, what we're seeing in the media, and, and actually labeling it and saying, you know, there, there are some there are many problematic aspects of the violence, but if you can see that that's the whole point of it, um, you know, change course. And I, and I, was, I was very impressed with, with your writing. I was, and like I said, you, you, our talks independently and reading your, your dissertation has made me, has altered how I look at some of the things I teach. Mm, um, I never saw nihilism in very, and it's like, come on, I've been teaching very for 30 years. And all of a sudden, wow, there's sneers in there. I, mean, I always knew it was in Russian literature. Was. And of course, the anarchists and everything, and the, and the, and the Bolshevik Revolution, all, I mean, all came out of Russia. Maybe at some point, I would like to see how do does the Times, what, what would, not like, obviously you wouldn't know, what would Anthony Burgess or Ray Bradbury write? If they vote those. Today. Actually, it's funny that you say that. Uh, two Sundays ago, I was listening to an interview with Anthony Burgess, and he said, just taught us, totally talked about how much he hates the Clockwork Orange, that he wishes he never wrote it, hmm. that his editor changed it so much. I was cracking up. I mean, he passed away in 1993, so that interview was from 1991, hmm. but it, it was pretty telling. Yes. Yeah, and there, there's all kinds of things, and I know. I mean, you took my course on the, on the 60s, mm -hmm. and what I try to, try to emphasize, and I'm doing a, a lot of my own personal research and stuff on like this, how the times, it, it could be the same subject matter, but it's going to be coming from a different angle. Ultimately, the overarching question is, how do these works continue to speak to our age? And I recognize that there's a certain paradox with my saying, you know, don't talk about politics in 2019, but also saying, you know, um, you know, why should we still be reading these books? Or why should we still be watching these films? This is good. So what we will do is ask our Marissa and our guests to leave the room for a few minutes. You don't have to go far, just you know, go out there. Congratulations, Dr. Schwartz. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Dr. Schwartz. Thank you very much. Yes.